Hello. So here is another sample final project that I've created to flesh out all the ideas of what we're looking for in a final project for this course. So in this one, I have used Java and JavaFX to create a uh, social distancing simulation. <clears throat> I want to explore the effects of movement and constrained movement on the spread of a virus or illness, something rather relevant to what we're going through right now. So I have people on my screen here. I have blue people who are susceptible to an illness. And I have a one red person down here who has the illness. And eventually there will be green people showing up and they will be people who have recovered from the illness. So we're gonna progress from susceptible people as they come in contact with an infected person, they will become infected. And those infected people, after a certain amount of time, the recovery number of seconds, so after five seconds right now, they will become uh, recovered and turn green. So let's see what happens with our simulation. Everybody can move everywhere they pretty much want. They can go as far as 200 uh, units away from where they started. So if I start the simulation down here, notice how quickly things seem to spread. We are watching the population histogram over time right here, and we are seeing over time a recording of that histogram at different time slices. So when there are no more infected people, the simulation will stop for us. Well, let's see the effect of limiting people's movement. If we know that someone is sick, then that person is sick right here. We're going to make sure that these people don't move very far. You see they're staying around a central location. Now, the spread of the illness is slower. It still peaks up a little bit, but it's taking us a lot longer to get there and we don't have such a big rise. The population is recovering over time here. And we can see if we really limit the distance, people don't move very much at all, it takes a lot longer for this illness to spread through the population. So we can start to see some of the effects of what's going on through simulating something with JavaFX and circles wandering around, bouncing off the walls. We've got some sliders. We're drawing some circles and rectangles. That population survived really well with a good amount of social distancing happening. Okay, so let's get to creating this project in Java. So let's go ahead and start a new project here and we are going to start it from a basic template, call it social distancing, and let's go ahead and put it in a new window. Now to help me program here, I will have my guide on another window. So let's get going. We want to start creating our package, and we're going to call this the distancing package. Here we go. And so within that, let's create our two packages for the GUI and make a new package for the model of what's going on. So let's start making some pieces of the model. And I want to make, let's start off with an enum for the different states three different states we were seeing. Let's start programming those up. Susceptible, infected, and recovered. Okay, so this is our simple enum. We have three possible states. I wanna make it a bit more complicated like we had seen before. I wanna make a public abstract method in here. Oh, pick the JavaFX one all the time. And it's going to associate a color with each of these pieces. So we've got a red squiggle up here. How do we fix it? Show those context actions. Well, let's 
oh, let's not create a test. Let's go in here and actually add a public color get color method to each one of them. Now the susceptible, we saw that they wanted to return color blue. Let's make it easy on us here. We are going to return a different color here and return a different color there. So susceptible, infected, and recovered. Oh, wait a second, we're missing a curly bracket here, missing a curly bracket there. There we go. That feels a little better. Semicolon at the end. And wait, we don't want them all to be blue. Oh, the trials of copy and paste. Infected ones were green. No, no, infected ones were red. And the recovered ones were green. Okay, so this sets up our three different states that we can call upon. And we can always ask a state for visualization purposes, what is your color? What should be associated with you on the screen? Okay, so that's the simplest part of the model to get going. Next, let's start talking about how we get these people to move around. So we're gonna make a class called Heading. Now inside this class, we are going to have a few different things. We're going to have uh, a speed. And let's just start that off as two. We can change this later in our code, but everybody's gonna be moving a speed of two across the screen. Let's figure out what is my change of x and my change of y. These are my three things that a heading is going to do. Now, in class we talked about how we got things to move around the screen. All of this stuff was compressed into one class, the person. I'm separating it out to try to really talk about decomposition here and give us a better way. If we're going to keep on doing this, and you want to do it with other pieces, then this is really going to separate those things out. So, somebody gives us a change of x and a change of y, we get to save them. dx, this dot dy equals dy. Okay, so something else we might want to do, let's make another constructor here, where someone says, I, I just want a random heading. So here's what we can do for that. Let's get a random number. This is gonna be our direction, and let's pick a number between zero and, well, an angle. If we're heading in a certain direction, we talk about those in terms of angles. We commonly use 360 degrees. Java prefers to use radians, which are not from zero to 360, but from zero to two pi. It makes the math easier, easier in talking about some sines and cosines, and so Java has that as its standard way if we are going to do stuff with sines and cosines. So let's talk to math random. Oh, math dot random. Let's multiply that times two times math dot pi. Okay, this gives us a direction in radians. And then we can easily say, And dy is going to be math.cosine of that direction. So we have an angle. We take the sine and the cosine. We figure out the x and the y values for it. OK. Let's do some gets here. Oh, I didn't do the easy one, but return dy, that looks good. And then when we hit walls, we want to be changing our heading. If we hit a wall on one side for the x coordinate, we want to change our heading and flip it around. 
If we hit the Y coordinate walls, we want to flip those around. So I'm going to make some methods here called public bounce X. And oh, it needs to be void. It just bounces in that certain direction. It's going to say DX times equals negative one. Same thing for public void bounce Y. Okay, so we have states defined and we have this heading piece, which is gonna help us figure out where we're going and bounce and change that heading as we need to. We can make random ones and this is gonna be helpful for our people to show up and just be in a random state. Puts the math of randomness here instead of having to remember it somewhere else. Okay, third thing we want to do Let's talk about a position. Where is somebody going to be located? So let's make a position class. Okay, so the position, where things are. We talked about dx and dy changing x and y values. Well, here's where we get to talk about the x and the y. So we have a private double x and a private double y. Perfect. Okay. Constructor time. Public position. Somebody gives us an x and a y. We record them. This dot x equals x. This dot y equals y. Okay. Well, that sounds good for right now. We'll come back and make another one later, but Let's do our get x and our get y. And okay, one more that we can do with a straightforward public distance. Now this is gonna return a distance between two points. And so we need to have somebody tell us what is the other position. If somebody tells that to us, we get to do the Euclidean distance formula. So we're gonna return the square root of multiply or subtracting this dot x minus other dot x and squaring them, adding that to the power of this dot y minus other dot y and squaring them. Okay, this is our standard Euclidean distance. So we have a position and we can get the x and the y from it and we can determine the distance between two positions. Okay, making a lot of progress here. Let's stop here. In the next video, we'll start to go into making the, the people, making a person and figuring out the context of them within the state of the whole model. So we'll come back to that next time.